You know, we've been getting a lot of letters, a lot of suggestions from viewers as to topics we ought to cover. And over and over again, we get people asking me, what do I think about the O.J. Simpson case? You know, when I got on talk radio back in the mid-90s-ish, O.J. Simpson uh, was accused of murdering two people. And I had been on radio for only a few months. It was a major, major case. You know, uh, O.J. Simpson was the most famous criminal defendant in the history of this country. I mean, he was really famous. Uh, he was a star in the NFL. Uh, he was a star in movies. Uh, there was something called the Book of Lists years ago, I think in, in the early 70s. And fifth graders were asked, who is your favorite hero or heroine? Girls were asked this uh, and boys were asked this. And both of them named O.J. Simpson as their favorite hero, both boys and girls. That's how much famous this dude was. So on uh, the night in question, O.J. Simpson, in my opinion, murdered two people. I mean, the man did everything but leave his business card at the crime scene. Uh, you're talking about the footprints that matched his feet. Uh, the knit cap had a, a hair in it that matched the kind of hair he had. There was blood at the crime scene. There was blood on the Bronco. There was a glove, of course, that was found at the crime scene that matched the one that was found at O.J. Simpson's house. Again, the man did everything but leave his business card at the crime scene. And don't forget the slow speed Bronco chase where he put a gun to his head uh, because he felt so guilty about what he had done. And uh, people can remember where they were when they're watching that white Ford Bronco go through uh, Southern California uh, en route ultimately to his house uh, in, uh, in Brentwood, uh, Rockingham. So uh, most people felt that there's no question that this man did it. Uh, during his first arraignment, he was distraught, he was morose. Uh, he said he was not guilty, but he did not at all have the same kind of confidence that he had at the second time when he said, I think it was 1,000% not guilty. Now, during the trial, a couple of major pieces of evidence were not, uh, were not uh, used. One of them was the slow-speed slow Bronco chase, and I talked with the lead prosecutor, Marsha Clark, years later, and I asked her why she didn't introduce it, and she said because uh, people would then say that he, was, uh, he, never, he never admitted his guilt, he never said that I did it, and their other major piece of evidence was that this guy was so brazen, O.J. Simpson, that he actually went to the police station without an attorney uh, and had a discussion with two detectives. His hands had cuts on them. And detectives even asked him about the cuts, and he gave some ridiculous excuse that he was working on fixing a bicycle or something like that. Uh, who goes to the police without a, an attorney? But he did. He was so brazen that he thought he was going to be able to talk his way out of it. So. Neither of those pieces of evidence was introduced. And when I talked to Marcia Clark uh, years later, uh, it wasn't years later, months after the trial, and I talked to Chris Darden, the other uh, prosecutor after the trial, both of them said that they, they felt the evidence was so overwhelming they didn't need it. Well, in comes Johnny Car Cochran. O.J. Simpson spends an estimated of $5 million on his defense team, and all of a sudden you had all these ridiculous theories about what happened. Uh, Colombian neckties, Mark Furman allegedly planted the glove because he was a racist. It was all horse bleep, but that jury took no more than maybe an hour or so to deliberate and came back with a not guilty verdict. Now, during the trial, I'm on the radio, and I said over and over again, based on the jury selection and based on the anger that I felt so many of these black jurors had uh, towards the allegedly racist judicial system, that O.J. Simpson was going, not going to be found guilty, but there would be a hung jury. I thought at least one of the jurors would hold out, and then they would have a second trial, and at least one of the jurors would hold out, and eventually the man would walk. Well, the walk part did happen, uh, but he was found not guilty uh, unanimously. It shocked, I think, most people. And it was all divided down racial lines. Black people felt that he was not guilty. White people felt that he was guilty. By the way, years later, you look at the polls, and the percentage of black people and white people who feel that he's guilty is about the same because of his O.J. Simpson's arrogance after the trial. He did not uh, suggest any kind of remorse. He was arrogant. He was cocky. He said he's going to spend the rest of his life looking for the killer or killers of Ron and Nicole. And here he is on the golf course uh, spending his time looking, at, uh, looking for the killer of Ron and Nicole. I guess he thinks the killer of Ron and Nicole are golfers. In any case, it did not look like the behavior of somebody uh, who, was, who was guilty. Do you hear anything like privacy is guaranteed? Today, I would like to introduce a new privacy and cybersecurity application tool called 
Secure. Secure is using proprietary encryption and is offering secure instant messaging and email. All communication is based on servers and data centers hosted in Switzerland without using any of the big tech platforms and also following the strictest Swiss data privacy laws. Constantly your private information, pictures, chat, email, have been stolen and your data have been mined and sold by big tech. When you use a free product, you are the product. Secure never minds your data and never asks for your phone number. Also, you can easily communicate with both secure user and non-secure users by using the chat by invite and using Secure Send when sending an email to others. Secure's technology allows you to communicate privately without fear of spying from your internet provider. It costs only $5 for the messenger and only $10 for the email and messenger package. Go to secure.com and take back your privacy today. Use promo code Larry for 25% off. And then there's karma. One of those who was involved in the trial was Robert Kardashian. Robert Kardashian died of cancer after the trial. Uh, Johnny Cochran died of cancer after the trial. Uh, Robert Shapiro's son died of a drug overdose after the trial. F. Lee Bailey was disbarred after the trial. And of course, O.J. Simpson was in Las Vegas where he was arrested for tried for and convicted of an armed robbery when he was apparently trying to get back some of his memorabilia that he thought had been taken away from him. So you look at all these things and then there's something else. Fast forward several years after the trial. There was a documentary about the O.J. Simpson case and one of the jurors was interviewed and she said the reason she found O.J. Simpson not guilty was, quote, because of Rodney King, close quote, Rodney King, of course, is the suspect that was brutally beaten by the LAPD. And initially, those involved were pretty much found not guilty. There was a second trial uh, on federal charges, and they were found guilty. But the first trial was widely deemed to be a miscarriage of justice. This juror literally said the reason she found O.J. Simpson not guilty was not because of the facts, not because of the law, but because of Rodney King. And the documentarian was so taken aback by it the follow-up question was, do you feel the other black jurors felt the same way? To which she said, and I'm quoting her, 90% of us did, close quote. Do you think that there are members of the jury that voted to acquit OJ because of Rodney King? Yes. You do? Yes. How many of you think felt that way? Oh, probably 90% of us. 90%? Did you feel that way? Yes. That was payback? Uh-huh. You think that's right? So talk about a miscarriage of justice. You know, when people talk about the acquittal verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, a lot of the people on the left talk about this as an example of the systemically racist judicial system. But when O.J. Simpson walked after having left, as I said, everything at the crime scene but his business card, where were the same people yelling and screaming about a racist judicial system? It was bogus. O.J. Simpson pimped the black community. You know, before this trial, O.J. Simpson probably could not, could not have found South Central Los Angeles, a black area of L.A., with a road map and a guide dog. All of a sudden, he pulls the race card and the man walks. It was a huge travesty of justice. Finally, there's this. After Johnny Cochran gave his closing argument and invoked uh, the Bible and talked about Hitler and, and made this thing almost like a civil rights case, I was so disturbed by it that I did a parody of the Johnny Cochran closing argument. Want to hear it? Now, 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 some of you are saying, uh, now wait a minute, wait a minute, where was OJ? Where was OJ during that 70 minute spot? Uh, and, and didn't his wife Nicole predict he'd kill her? Now, and, 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 and what about all the blood? That bloody trail leading from the scene up to, into, and on the Bronco. And what about that cap with that African American hair in it? What about the footprints? What about the limo driver and him seeing that black hulking figure going across the grass? Some people think it might be OJ. I'm not saying it don't look bad, but let me respond to that two ways. Mark Furman. Now, now, <laughs> now, this trial is not about OJ Simpson. This trial is not about Detective Philip Van Etter. This trial is not about Detective Mark Furman. 
those twins of deception, that diabolical duo, those masters of disaster. This trial is about Hitler. This trial is about Stalin. This trial is about Mussolini. This trial is about Genghis Khan. This trial is about Shaka Khan. Uh, 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 Confucius, Confucius say, man who keeps his head when all others lose theirs will be the only one to require a haircut. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. This trial is about a black man who deigned to cross the color line and marry a white woman. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what some of y'all are thinking. What, 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 Johnny, don't you have a white woman? Now, haven't you been going out with a white woman? And, 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 and you've been able to amass a fortune of between five, six million dollars? How come the white man ain't stopped you? A fair question. I'm happy you asked that. Let me respond to that two ways. Mark Furman. Now, 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 do the right thing. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hakuna Matata. Louie Louie. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Hold the pickles. Hold the lettuce. Special orders do not upset us. Bop, bop, ba loo, bam, ba lam, bam, boom. Tutti fruity. Oh, Rudy. Think about it. Think about it. We black people, we know. <laughs> <laughs> we know, <laughs> we know about racism. We deal with racism every day. Every single day we deal with racism. Every hour, every minute, every second, yesterday, today, tomorrow. I first dealt with racism in the uterus. I deal with it in the grave, from the womb to the tomb. Now, now the Bible tells us, he who covers up a crime involving a double-edged knife with a white bronco wearing a knit cap shall be denied interest to the gates of Rockingham. Can I get an amen? This is from the book of John, Shaft. This is a great country. This is a great country. It's got a great constitution. Country full of racists, but, but they great racists. We don't have no jive racists here. We got, we got great racists. The founding fathers, they was, they was great racists. There was, there was Jefferson, there was, there was Washington, there was Madison, there was Ben Franklin, there was Aretha Franklin, there was John Adams, there was Samuel Adams, there was Budweiser, there was Labatt's, there was Michelob, there was Coors Light. Think about it. Think about it. Now, so I say to you, this trial is not about O.J. Simpson. This trial is not contrary to what the prosecution might want you to believe. It ain't a crusade against the white man. They some good white people. They dead, but when they was alive, they was good. And, 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 and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is time for the white man to wake up, get up, get dressed, get ready, and get the hell out of town. I don't care where he go. He can go to Canada. He can go to Mexico. He can go to Euro Disney. I just want him to go. Now, no OJ, no OJ, OJ, loaded, loaded, ain't no way. I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen things. See, I got mine. I got mine. I drive a Rolls Royce to work every day. I own two, three Jaguars. I got beachfront property in Marina Del Rey, and I got a white woman on the side. I got mine. That ain't the issue. I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen things. I may not get there with you, but I've seen things. Thine eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. Free at last, free at last. Grab Mark Furman and kick his ass. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So that's what I think about the O.J. Simpson case.